Rave. New enforcement tools for the new drug culture. From 1999 to 2000, the number of drug-related emergency room visits in the Seattle area increased 32%, outranking Boston and Los Angeles. While all drug use continues to increase nationwide, the party drug ecstasy has seen a massive increase in popularity in Washington state, increasing 58% in one year alone. This video is designed to help you spot and evaluate suspected users driving under the influence of the drug ecstasy. These ecstasy users frequent a new form of social gathering or parties they call raves. Thursday, January 24, 2002. Federal drug enforcement agents and Seattle police arrested 21 people in a major drug bust. The defendants were charged with selling more than 50,000 tablets of ecstasy to partygoers. Most of the defendants were in their late teens and early 20s. Besides the usual assortment of drugs and alcohol you might find at any rave, the popular party drugs are ecstasy, GHB, and ketamine. Ecstasy, or MDMA, is both a stimulant and a hallucinogen. Some street names for the drug are E, X, Adam, and Bean. Ravegoers use ecstasy for energy and for the good feelings it produces. It also increases the heart rate and body temperature, occasionally resulting in heart or kidney failure. Ecstasy users have also died from acute dehydration. Ecstasy can cause confusion, depression, and dizziness, affecting coordination and reaction time, so naturally it affects the user's ability to drive, and brain damage caused by ecstasy may be permanent. GHB, or gamma-hydroxybutyrate, also popular at raves, is actually a depressant. Users experience a sense of giddiness that leads to a deep sleep accompanied by amnesia. GHB comes in a grainy white powder that dissolves in water or alcohol. A few drops of this colorless, odorless drug can quickly render someone unconscious. Sometimes called Easy Lay and Liquid X, it has been used in date rape incidents. The body metabolizes GHB relatively quickly, and it may be undetectable in blood samples as little as 12 hours after it has been taken. Ketamine, also known as Vitamin K or Special K, is a depressant and a fast-acting general anesthetic. It is relatively new to the teen drug scene, but gaining popularity for the short-lived high it produces. The white powder is generally snorted, and it often makes a person hallucinate and lose his sense of time and identity. Ketamine is in the same family as the animal tranquilizer PCP, or angel dust, although it is milder in its effects on the brain. Users who take too much ketamine fall into what is commonly known as a K-hole, a deep unconscious state that may take hours to recover from. We concentrate on Friday and Saturday nights when most of the rave parties are occurring. You get the kids coming to the party who have taken their hits before the party, and then you get the kids after the party where they've been dancing all night, they've taken more hits of ecstasy, and now they're getting back into the car dehydrated and trying to drive home. We organize our emphasis to work from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m because that's when the most activity at the rave parties are, are happening. When you stop someone who is impaired by ecstasy, you may first suspect alcohol has been used. The driver will show signs consistent with alcohol DUIs, but there are several warning signs you need to look for in order to tell the difference between alcohol and ecstasy users. Hi, how you doing? Oh. I'm Trooper Green with the State Patrol. The reason I pulled you over, you were doing 45 and a 30 back there. Did you realize that? There are very specific paraphernalia-oriented indicators that will tell you if someone is part of the rave culture. Look for pacifiers, because with ecstasy, one thing that's really noticeable is bruxism. They want to they grind their teeth. Also, bright colored clothes, uh, lots of beads, colored beads, uh, th anything with lights, uh, glow sticks are another common thing. You'll even stop people and they'll have the glow sticks still in their mouth. Clothing, glow sticks, surgical masks, colorful jewelry, and pacifiers are just a few of the things you want to look for. You might smell menthol or Vicks Vapor Rub on the person or in the car. Some other things was the rave flyers that were actually in the car. A lot of times they will have um, rave, old rave flyers thrown throughout the car or ones that they get at the, the rave they went to. Ask them to get out to run through the test. Some of the indicators I saw on the test is he's in a short sleeve, thin shirt. It's actually uh, pretty cold out here and I'm actually a little chilly with my uh, turtleneck on and my long sleeve. He appears to be fine and not be um, um, cold at all. That's another sign of uh, ecstasy use. It, it raises the body temperature very high. 
He had a glow stick in his mouth. Uh, didn't he wasn't even aware he had that in there. An ecstasy user may first appear to be under the influence of alcohol. By conducting the standardized field sobriety test, an officer will be able to tell whether or not alcohol is involved. You want to take the investigation very seriously. You want to do the standardized field sobriety test and make the determination, are they impaired or not impaired? What I normally do is I, I or offer them a portable breath test and see if there's any alcohol on board. And if there's no alcohol or say the person has sobriety tests of uh, a person that's a 1.5 and, and they blow like a .03 on a PBT, which is not um, normal, that it's not consistent with their BAC, then um, by the, after you arrest them, you'd need to call a DRE. And ravers tend to normally not drink alcohol. Uh, if they drink alcohol with ecstasy, it uh, usually makes them sick. Officers who are on the lookout for alcohol-impaired drivers should also be on the lookout for drug-impaired drivers. If drug impairment is suspected, contact your local dispatch and request a DRE officer to the scene. Drug recognition experts will check the impaired driver's eyes. L literally, there'll be no iris hardly left to their eye. There'll be a solid pupil. When someone is on ecstasy, even bright lights won't affect their dilated pupils. This time we're going to place him under arrest, advise him of his rights, and then from there we'll take him off and do a, um, a drug recognition uh, eval where I'll run him through the same sobriety tests I ran through out here physically wise, record those, and then um, run him through some more clinical tests, which check his eyes, pulse, blood pressure, his eyes in different lighting, and uh, determine to be able to call as an expert what type of drug he's under the influence of. Ecstasy use is addictive and damaging to a person's health. Ecstasy users are putting themselves and other drivers at extreme risk when they get behind the wheel of an automobile. I like to compare ecstasy with methamphetamine. I think they're both very closely related. The difference is the person on ecstasy is a one-year-old and the person on methamphetamine is a psychotic. It's our duty as police officers to make sure we take these people off the road. For more information about club drugs or how to become a drug recognition expert, contact the WSP Drug Evaluation and Classification section at 360-427-2181.